Thank you for joining us today for our webinar on Windows Server 2003 and of life. Am I ready to move on? This will be a brief webinar geared towards helping you understand the importance of migrating from Windows Server 2003, a soon to be end of life operating system. Certainly, some of you may be joining this webinar because you plan or are planning to move away from Windows Server 2003. But are you, but are you ready to move on? This is a question that some of you may have brought up internally about your IT infrastructure. We'll discuss this in more detail as we move through this webinar. My name is Marco Romero, Account Manager and Customer Advocate for MindShift Technologies core desktop team at the New York City office. I've been with MindShift Technology for approximately three years, having previously worked as an IT manager. My professional background consists of over 13 years in information technology, project, and customer relationship management while working with small to medium-sized businesses of different industries. Learning different business processes from each of those industries has allowed me to understand IT operations better. I'm also very grateful to be part of one of the top and leading managed service provider in the world, which was ranked in the top five by MSP Mentor in 2014. So let's get started by reviewing our five items for today's agenda. They are the negative impact that Windows Server 2003 end of life brings to your IT infrastructure and organization, added cost to maintain Windows Server 2003 while in end of life status, advantages of migrating to a more dynamic Windows 2008-2012 operating systems, and a go forward plan and server deployment to cloud or a local environment. In this session, we will focus on the financial impact and added cost of staying on Windows Server 2003 versus upgrading your infrastructure to a more advanced and dynamic Windows environment, such as our MindShift CloudShift server for hosted virtual servers and our Veeam Cloud Connect for backing up on-premise virtual servers. I'm also going to cover the financial impact of legacy systems such as Windows Server 2003 will have while it's in end of life. We'll also discuss a little bit on what to expect when you remain on Windows Server 2003 and great benefits of migrating to a newer server environment uh, for your organization. Ask yourselves, am I ready to migrate my infrastructure on, onto a newer server platform and take advantage of Windows Server dynamic technologies or should we remain where we are and wait until our server infrastructure becomes obsolete. At MindShift, our goal is to help steer you in the right direction with customized solutions and best practices for your business and organization. I'll talk a bit more about these items on the agenda for this webinar. Many times we're left wondering if we should move on from our comfort zone and upgrade our IT infrastructure. That comfort zone may not be welcome when you're looking at a core operating system that is going into end of life in a couple of months. There are numerous risks involved after Microsoft decides to pull the plug and place Windows Server 2003 in end of life status. We all know how great it felt, right, when we had Windows Server 2000 and we migrated over to Windows Server 2003. Now imagine what it's going to feel like when you get rid of your Server 2003 environment and you move to either 2008 or 2012. So what we'll do first, we'll, we'll talk about some negative impacts that you'll run into if you fail to migrate from Server 2003 to either 2008 or 2012. Compliance, this is a big one. Notice that this is the first one on my list. Uh, it's a major part of your IT infrastructure, inf excuse me, a major part of your IT infrastructure, um, you, you know, when you do auditing, you know, or organizations that are still on Windows Server 2003 might find themselves not able to meet regulatory and compliance requirements because they're still on Server 2003. And, you know, not being in compliance or non-compliant, you run the risk of having to pay thousands of dollars in fees and fines. And you could also lose business. Depending on the industry that you're in, you're going to have to deal with the PCI industry, which is the payment card industry. You got the SOCs, the HIPAA, uh, PHI, and then there's 
other compliance and regulatory standards out there. Uh, again, it all depends on the industry that you're that you're doing and what type of business uh, um, transactions that you're handling on a day-to-day -day, uh, um, operations. So these compliance and regulatory standards are key to your company, and organizations are going to need to meet the minimum requirements from those regulatory bodies. Uh, I don't have a list of what they are, but I'm pretty sure you can hop onto their website and, and pull that information down. Uh, so it's very important that you keep that in mind. You also start to see mismatches with your applications and software. It's possible that this has already been happening uh, with some of the vendors that you deal with because uh, they probably already moved away from Windows Server 2003 and are either on Windows Server 2008 or 2012. Um, just to give you an example of, of some software that's not compatible with, with Server 2003, uh, you have Microsoft Office 2013, which is the newest and latest one. Uh, it, that's not going to work on Exchange 2003, right? So it's also not going to work on, on a box that has Windows Server 2003. Um, vendors are not going to be able to support any of the legacy applications or software after uh, July 2015. And um, if you do have support with a vendor, they may require additional costs and labor to be able to support that environment. Uh, for instance, financial organizations that are uh, on equity works and wanting to move over to version 7, you're not going to be able to move to version 7 unless you have uh, a Windows Server 2008 environment, uh, both for SQL Server and the standard file domain controller. Um, Windows Server 2003 is not compatible uh, with a lot of software uh, that are being created uh, for the newer platforms. Um, unless you move to Windows Server 2008 and 2012, you'll be left off running a legacy software. How about your applications and software that are still running on Windows Server 2003? Do you ever run into a situation where updates were no longer available for your server or software? Now imagine what this would be in, on your server and your IT environment if Microsoft discontinues support for Windows Server 2003. And when they do, um, you're no longer going to receive Windows updates, right? It's going to leave you prone to attacks because there's not going to be any security patches going in. Uh, your server and your data is is at risk of being compromised and exposed, and uh, that running the risk of data breaches and exposing that sensitive material to hackers can cost your organization thousands of dollars and fines and fees, and you also lose credibility due to those data breaches. Furthermore, right, Microsoft will no longer provide customers uh, with Windows updates for third-party applications and software. Um, for example, those that are server-dependent like your print drivers, um, you know, if your print, print drivers are running on a newer version or are not built for Windows Server 2003, you're not going to be able to use that on a domain controller that's hosted on Server 2003. Some vendors will continue to make these downs downloads available. Uh, best practice recommends that you continue to keep support uh, uh, support contract with those vendors, right? Uh, if not, you will, you're going to be forced to to, um, to be supporting the whole infrastructure and environment without any sort of warranty or additional services that those vendors can provide to you. Um, again, uh, those are some of the issues that your organization are going to face uh, come July 2015. But what about the financial impact on Server 2003 end of life? What will it cost? you or your organization, the business, to be able to support Server 2003 after July 2015. Keeping up with technological changes can be expensive and requires a lot of planning before you migrate to newer platforms. But if you're not ready to migrate over to Windows 2008 or Windows 2012, um, that's the server version, uh, and budgeting for 2015 did not include any major uh, server migrations or any IT migrations as a whole. Um, just what are you going to expect and what should you expect from vendors uh, 
when Microsoft places Server 2003 in end-of-life status. For the most part, Microsoft will not remove support right away, but will eventually start charging for additional support services on Windows Server 2003 and, um, and other components that are, that are tied into Server 2003. You should expect vendors to start charging customers for supporting Server 2003, right? Uh, there's going to be either flat fees, hourly rates, or they'll probably just discontinue support as a whole. We, we don't know yet, but Microsoft will eventually do this. So keep in mind that this can be seen as an, as an unplanned cost uh, if your organization did not anticipate changes to your support model. Hardware. Dell, HP, and IBM, which are some of the key players in the server world, uh, will no longer carry spare parts for a legacy hardware. That's going to require you to seek out third-party vendors for spare parts. Um, manufacturer warranties will be discontinued, uh, making it difficult for your organization to replace bad hardware. Some manufacturers will no longer sell you a warranty service if your server is in end-of-life status. It's been known that third-party hardware vendors will sell you a legacy part or uh, an old part, right? but at a high cost. So hardware will eventually cost more because there's, they're no longer going to be making them. Um, and, you know, some manufacturer warranties are no longer going to be offered for the legacy hardware and server environments that uh, your organizations will be on. The software. Software vendors will continue to support your application servers and, soft, and server software for the time being. Um, patches may go out from time to time. But what happens when Windows Server 2003 starts giving you problems? And the issue starts to have a big impact on your, on your software or your server environment. Let's say Microsoft no longer offers patches and support to that server environment. We're talking about Server 2003, right? Uh, but to fix it and to resolve the problem, you're asked to upgrade the outdated package. How will you work around this issue and correct the problem? Newer features and tools uh, for, for that software will no longer be compatible with Windows Server 2003. And all these points, the vendors, the hardware, and the software um, have an added cost uh, to your organization and your business. Um, so this is one of the financial areas that you know you should be concerned about uh, going forward. So most servers that are running Server 2003 are on average five to seven years old. Uh, they are going to be prone to crashes and failures at this point. Uh, but if you don't have a domain controller or an application server or any backup uh, piece of equipment that's that's meet the minimum requirements to be moved over to Windows Server 2008, uh, then you know you, you shouldn't be too worried about it. But at the same token, uh, now would be a good time to look into it and, and migrate over before it's too late. So we want you to stay active um, without any server interruptions. And we all know that server outages can be costly to your organization. So why should you migrate over to Windows Server 2012 and 2000, uh, or 2008? There are several benefits to migrate over to Server 2008 or Windows Server 2012. I'll mention some of those advantages on our next item on, on this agenda. Security. Uh, Windows Server 2008 and 2012 are more secure. Newer versions of uh, Microsoft Windows uh, have better technology. Uh, one example is the BitLocker, which is a whole disk, whole disk encryption tool. Uh, it allows you to encrypt at 256 encryption rate on your hard drive, and it also prevents unauthorized access from boot. Uh, that feature is a big step up from Windows Server 2003. Uh, that environment, that legacy server, uh, didn't have an encryption feature built into it. You had the directory encryption, but not the whole disk encryption. 
um, Windows Server 2008 and 2012, uh, you'll, you'll also have a stronger remote access connection from and to servers um, using SSTP, which is also called Secure Sockets Tunneling Protocol. Uh, this feature offers a, a secure connection via SSL through a, a tunnel from your remote client or your RDP server, uh, vice versa, right? So the S STP is not a site-to-site -site VPN tunnel, but rather used for remote access from a workstation or remote client to be able to get into your network or your server environment. Virtualization. Um, you'll find that virtual, virtualization is much easier to use and deploy for Windows Server 2008 and Server 2012. One of the great advantages for hosting multiple servers on a single high-performance server hardware is that you'll be able to spin up multiple environments within the same box. Um, Microsoft introduced Hyper-V on Windows Server 2008. They enhanced it for Server 2012, and a lot of companies are taking advantage of this new tool, new feature. Um, it allows IT to spin up testing environments and either Server 2008 or multiple instances of Server 2012 before launching a full-blown uh, operation, operational server. Um, that can save you from a lot of headaches, it can save you from failed launches, and you won't waste too much time trying to resolve those issues on a production server. Now you can remove and, uh, and you can add virtual environments more efficiently and fine-tune them according to your virtual needs, right? The old way of doing it is that you were stuck with one box and you were you had the the option of using a VMware tool but this time around so Windows Server is now offering um, a Hyper-V technology within Server 2008 and 2012 that allows you to uh, spin up multiple uh, virtual machines or virtual servers. The idea of, hi of having multiple server environments on a single piece of hardware is both convenient and we all know it's financially sound. Uh, but remember, it does require you to have a, a good high-performance server with enough specifications in place to power those environments. Mindshift technologies can help you build such an such, uh, environment, or uh, we can put something together in either the cloud, we can create a hybrid, or um, go ahead and build that in your, in your data center. So having said that, I would like to talk about our you know, next item on the agenda. Uh, I'll give you a broad overview about the different offerings that MyShift can provide to you. Uh, this is what I call a go-forward plan, both either on the cloud or local environments. MyShift technologies are experts on finding the best solution that best fits your needs. Uh, we're experts in this field in both the cloud and the local environments. We provide uh, multiple solutions depending on your needs, and this is what our, uh, our plans are when a customer or a potential customer approaches us, and we would go ahead and uh, design this for you. And we pride ourselves in delivering IT peace on, of mind with our customers and potential customers. Our staff, they're, again, they're highly trained and will provide a suitable solution for your business and organizations. We can build your physical server or servers and host multiple virtual machines within the same box. Um, if you have the space and would prefer to keep your servers in-house, then um, that'll give you a good, you know, some sense of ownership if you want to keep them in your data center. But um, you know, choosing physical servers over co-locating cloud solution would then be the best fit for you, right? So physical servers can be built with multiple uh, storage arrays and have higher capacity RAID configurations, right? You'll have an, uh, an estimated or approximate five to seven years of, uh, of, of life on those, on those uh, physical boxes before you have to purchase new ones. And the equipment is on premise in your data center. So uh, a lot of the components that are gonna be in your data center um, are gonna be uh, your circuits, your network equipment, 
and all of those key components will need to manage and, and, and provide uh, internet connectivity to your service so that we can help um, push that to the internet or to the public world. Um, you do not want to pay the overhead costs and maintain equipment on site um, or if it or downtime is a big concern to your organization, then moving to our MindShift cloud services will be a great fit and a long-term solution. Um, and we'll host your service in our data centers. Um, the CloudShift server enterprise offerings provides a, some great benefits. Uh, we'll manage them for you. We will provide 24 by 7 monitoring services, disk space, CPU and memory utilizations, hardware availability, and, uh, and much more. You can browse through our cloud services uh, at MindShift.com and you should be able to uh, get more details about uh, what we provide to our customers. Uh, we'll be certainly glad to help you out. So, uh, you, again, you won't need to worry about keeping your servers on site nor having to worry about maintaining the server environment. So that's a plus. Our engineers and data centers will handle this for you. Uh, again, that's 24 by 7, 365 days out of the year. Um, another solution that would be suitable for those that have uh, Windows Server 2003 um, but prefer of moving and prefer moving to the cloud is AWS. But this technology is a, more of a, of a hybrid solution that spans public and private cloud servers so, uh, and can even include uh, on-premise servers. Right? You can choose to build various IT infrastructures, uh, servers, and storage, and enhance security. Uh, but Mind, MindShift, again, MindShift is, will... Uh, provide 24 by 7 support, 365 days out of the year. Uh, we, we offer live support. You'll get a live rep on the phone, um, up-to-date monitoring, proactive resolutions to uh, your environment, and every one of those options are available for your next server migration through MindShift. So remember, getting rid of your server 2003 box and starting fresh with a new solution is crucial in the upcoming months. MindShift technology is available to help your organizations and provide you with a sound solution for your business needs. So if you have any questions or uh, you are not sure on what IT migration, I'm sorry, server migration that you're coming up with, um, you know, we can provide a go forward plan for you. Uh, it's important and I'm sure you're still going to have a lot of questions. So. Again, MindShift is going to help you fit that environment to what you're looking for, and we can discuss those different options with you. So here's a quick snapshot of who MindShift is and what our core business is compromised of. Uh, we are a full-service managed service provider. Um, we provide desktop and service support, all of your IT needs and cloud services, as well as professional services. We have over 15 years in this business. Um, again, we are ranked in the top five globally. And be sure to visit our website. And uh, thank you for your time today. Uh, for more information, please feel free to reach out and find out more through our website. And also, you can connect to us through our social media, which is Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Thank you for your time.